Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Tag Along. I'm your host, Bilal Khan, and I'm here with Mohamed Mane. Uh, in this video, uh, if you haven't been following along, please go check out the playlist, watch all of the different videos um, that we've been discussing on the different topics that we are pulling from the uh, story of, um, well, his class, Once Upon the Nile, the Epic of Moses. Uh, so we discuss a number of topics. In this video, the topic that we're going to be discussing is the subject or theme mm -hmm. of da'wah, mm. which is the idea of uh, or the concept of inviting people to worshiping Allah, right? Is that how you define da'wah? Hmm, I got to think about that. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Inviting people to the worship of Allah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There's definitely validity to that. I'm not saying... you're. You're wrong. I'm just thinking of. I mean, that's how I've always understood it. I yeah, thought, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, but like, I, I'm not debating that. I'm just thinking, what are the different facets and and definitions are are a challenging thing to grapple with because you want you want them to be well. You can define things on multiple layers, yeah, right? Yeah. Like even a single word. When I mean from from in Islamic sciences, somebody might define something on a linguistic level, something might uh, or right, right. on a uh, Sharia level, right? Which I guess is kind of related to linguistics. Well, on a legal level. Yeah, right. on a legal level. Yeah, I got you. On yeah. a cultural level. Yeah. Right? So, um, I, I guess when it comes to da'wah, yeah. what are the known, at least to you, the known understandings and definitions of it? Uh, there's there's informing, inviting, clarifying. And three, are, you know, oh, those are three very different things. Yeah. Right? Like if you're informing someone, it's like, hey, FYI. Mm -hmm. Inviting is like, yo, come check this out. Mm. Right? And mm. clarifying is like, just so you know, you know. Yeah. Well, I, actually, which brings us to a very interesting point, which is that Darwa isn't conversion. It's not. Con <laughs> yeah, it isn't that. Yeah. But it's not cookie cutter, you know? Okay. The Prophet, um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I mean, so dealt with different people. In different ways, in a, in a very nuanced way, in, in, a, in a way that's sensitive to their background and to their um, understanding and their level. When you mention so nuance, I yeah. think would it be more appropriate to study dawah as case study? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? Because look, there there are principles. Yeah, and, and this is what what's important is for us to learn principles. Okay, and then the application of that principles will vary from one circumstance to another, and that's where the case study stuff comes yeah. in, right? Okay, yeah. So uh, I think a big part of da'wah is um, before we even learn, uh, and this is this is really important because when you see these messengers, okay, and 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 how they were successful and how they were effective in their da'wah, and you see the companions and and scholars and 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 people that that are effective in da'wah it, it's um as, as one of as one of my uh, my <clears throat> my teachers used to say it's not always about what you say but how, how you, you say, say it. it okay so i think you know an important principle of da'wah is the ability to communicate effectively i mean even even how more so do you is communicate? It, communication is big certainly the communication factor but when you talk about how you say something in that situation it's even less about communication and more about how you made them feel that's part of communication. Right? Because at the end of the day, they may not remember what you said to them. But, but they'll remember how they, feel, how they felt. Around you, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really important. That's really important. And the Prophet Wasallam used to always make people feel comfortable. That's something he took uh, steps towards and made an effort to do. So it's fair to say that one of the principles of da'wah is to establish rapport. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. So okay. how what can we take away from the life of Musa in, in especially how you share it on the on the Dawah yeah. side. You know what's really amazing? Um, when we go through the verses, uh, the ayat in the Quran, um, where Musa is having a dialogue with Fir'aun, with okay. the Pharaoh, and we notice that, uh, I mean, when we, we a big thing is we have to study context. Okay. Right? When we're just talking about this right now, we're like, Musa, Pharaoh, okay, cool. But no, we really have to understand who is this Pharaoh? Okay. What kind of a person was he? How did he deal with people? How did he treat people? What did he think of himself? So you got to establish what the kind, character. Yeah, we really, and, and that's what we spend a lot of time doing okay. in this course. So we can really, so when we talk about these things here, yeah. we can actually picture being there. Okay. Right? So it's, you know, and when you do that, 
it, it makes the, the, the message and the lesson so much more powerful. You know, what's interesting is um, in, in, in story writing and screenwriting. Yeah. There's a, there's a principle that was outlined by this one gentleman who basically was known for like making like best-selling screenplays. Mm-hmm. He wrote a book called Save the Cat. Right. And it's like, what does that mean? The title of the book is the principle of storytelling. It's like before you go into the story, you have to establish the character. Mm. And one of the basic ways that you can establish a character is based on the behavior that they do. Mm-hmm. You know he's a good guy or she's a good guy mm. if they save the cat. Mm. You know they're a bad guy if they kick the cat. Mm. Right? And what you're explaining is like you basically that that human principle of storytelling, mm. you're, you're you're sharing that. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is establishing that reality oh, yeah. of who yeah. Pharaoh is yeah. based on how many times he's kicking the cat. Mm. In this case, the cat being people, right? Mm. Or does he do more? Than- yeah. Oh, that's that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, but 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 once you understand that, and yeah. then we look to these dialogues, it makes it so much more incredible. So Musa is is in that situation, right? Mm-hmm. And he's he's addressing, he's giving Darwa in front of Firaun. Okay. Um, one of the worst people in history because of their actions and yeah. because of their behavior and their attitude um, and in the process of that Fir'aun utilizes so many different tactics to throw Musa off his game okay he, he questions his message put like you know doubt or skepticism in the minds of the listeners or maybe to shake Musa to rattle him you know okay. like if you come and tell me something and I just respond with a bold question Oh yeah, really? Is that what it, you know? It, it's not, for some, a lot of people, it'll call, kind of throw you know, them off, it's, it's, off it's, balance. You it, know? It's kind of like uh, the the marketer's dilemma for the last few years. I might be trying to invite the individual or the prospective client. Hey, you know, you need to do such and such thing in advertising or marketing or social media. I don't like social media. I know. I <laughs> that's why <laughs> it's and and, and uh, but the thing is, the question that comes about yeah. is like, hey, what's the what's the return on the investment? It's like my like my gut reaction is like, what's the return on the investment of putting your pants on in the morning, right? <laughs> right. You, you, this is where I feel like I would relate with the story of Musa in that situation, where like he's clearly coming forward with something of real value, mm. right? And okay. somebody's responding. Now you're bringing it back home. I'm starting to yeah. understand you now. Okay. So the person and the individual. This is why. You, this is why you like notebooks that don't have lines. Why? Because you don't want to be restricted with lines. You want to just be all over the page. I, well, I that, understand that. Yeah, I have, yeah. it's, my mind works. Uh, such I've, been, I've been mentally chasing you for the bad <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going with this? <laughs> so just, just the idea that like here, I'm bringing something of value yeah. and you would benefit so much from it. And it's like, you're bringing forth a question. It's like, okay, there's a real fundamental facet you really don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. What's amazing is that Musa doesn't get shaken. Hmm. And then it's not just about like Fir'aun, you know, kind of sort of putting him on the spot like, and, and questioning what he's coming with. But then he also ridicules him right, in front of other listeners. And all of those listeners, by the way, they're all yes men to Fir'aun. Yeah. So it's not like anyone there is on Musa. You know, Musa is definitely, you know, the minority in this situation. Um, and he's coming from an ethnic minority. Right. Which is like... They're two at strikes. the bottom of the two man, like you know. Uh, so it's crazy when when you and, factor and all those I, variables. I guess the other in. element is that he's also from that society's perspective, and they, they uh, wanted to wanted, kill him. You know, subject. many years before. It's it's just amazing, and and they they, they call him names, and then and then Pharaoh Pharaoh threatens him, mm. and 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 you look at Musa's responses, and all each response is more confident than the one before and he doesn't waver and he doesn't get defensive and he doesn't feel the need to respond to Fir'aun's petty name calling or um, you know uh, shallow attempts at distracting the audience from what Musa is coming forward with he's just moving forward confidently and with strength it almost seems like with his, substance it almost seems like his dialogue and his conversations with Pharaoh it's more, and I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, at least this is my assumption. My assumption is that the wisdom behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting Musa in a dialogue with Pharaoh wasn't so that he could potentially convince the Pharaoh, but more so to set the stage so that everybody else could listen in and watch. 
Yeah. Right? Kind of like from the story of the boy and the king. Yeah. Right? Mm. And where everybody else in the end ended up embracing the idea of Tawheed yeah. uh, when the king killed the boy. If anybody yeah. doesn't know the story of the boy and the king. Surat al-Buruj. Yeah, Surat al-Buruj kind of uh, yeah. uh, gets right into the finale of it. Yeah. Um, no, no, definitely. That's part of the strategy uh-huh. of Musa, which, which brings to another point is that he strategizes. His darwa is not random and it's not haphazard. It's not. It's not just. You know. It, it's interesting because you're mentioning strategy and the fact that he's going after the individual who has the greatest influence in that town, and, and this is like a right out of like books of business and military strategy. Yeah. Like Karl von Clausewitz is a Prussian general from like the 14th or 15th century, and one of the things that he mentions in bit and they and they, and they derive is like, look, if you want to get your message across, you need to attack. And or ally ally yourself with the centers of influence, those who have the greatest amount of gravity mm. in society. Because if you do that, one of two things are going to happen: either you're going to uh, win, or you're going to uh, uh, garner more mass mm. from those around them. Mm. And I think this is kind of like what's happening. In, in the situation, in the dialogue. Well, between. Musa is obeying the command of Allah. Allah told him, إِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ Okay. You know, go to Pharaoh, go okay. to this Fir'aun. He's, he's tyrannical. He's, he's a tyrant. He's an oppressor. He's transgressed. Um, so, so Musa's fulfilling that command and that mission, that objective that, that, that Allah has assigned him okay. uh, with. Okay. Uh, but he's very aware and cognizant of of the greater audience as well. Okay. And he strategizes. You know, when when he wants to bring forth the miracles that Allah has given him, yeah. he chooses a day. He says, the appointment will be on this particular day, a day when, when people will gather. Okay. And everyone will be there to witness the miracles of Allah. Um, uh, so he was strategic. Uh, he, he was intelligent about, about his da'wah. Um, now the thing is so Musa is being commanded by Allah yeah. to go talk to Pharaoh and he fulfills that but the decision of how to talk to him of where to talk to him all of that is that from him or is that from Allah is that like instruction from Allah do it this way do it that way uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely did give him certain um, instructions um like for example, Allah tells him, "Fakula lahu qawlan layina." Okay. So you know, speak speak with him in in a uh, in a manner that is that is gentle. You don't don't be don't be uh, offensive. Don't be don't don't curse. Don't don't uh, you know be yell and scream. But be be polite. Be respectful. Yeah. About your your manner of speaking, which is really important. And it's amazing that Allah would tell Musa to do that. When talking to the Fir'aun, Fir'aun yeah. who's like the most disrespectful person ever. Okay. You know, but still Allah tells Musa, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا You know, so he, this is a really important principle in da'wah. You, there's no effective da'wah with with uh, insulting. There's no effective da'wah with abusive speech or, or, or character or behavior. I think that's an awesome reflection, but at the same time, or and at the same time, one thought that comes to mind, this is one of our, one of our other videos, we talk about emotions, hmm. right? And what, what the messengers might have felt. Yeah. I'm wondering how much self-restraint and discipline and self-control Musa A.S. had to have hmm. to not lash out yeah. at Pharaoh. Yeah. And and uh, for, because Musa A.S. he himself is a very passionate individual. Yes. Right? And, and he's strong. Yeah. And he's not the type of person to see someone doing wrong and just walk away from the situation yeah. that's not he's not that type he can't so he can't do that so to be gentle with this tyrant with a passionate personality incredible self control and restraint yeah and 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 understanding of his mission and okay. understanding of the importance of his da'wah and i think that you that know? comes down to it also just like self control self discipline yeah. but but keep in mind what musa doesn't water down his message of course his you know in applying that uh, uh, instruction from Allah yeah. he's not like um, uh, ashamed of his message he's not uh, you know he's not presenting it in a passive way it, his sentences and his statements are very confident okay and very profound very strong yeah you know he's talking about Allah and he's describing who Allah is and the might of Allah and the dominion of Allah 
and and Allah's control and the fact that He is the Creator and that He's created everything from this, you know, the 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 heavens to the ground and from the east and the west and everything in between. Yeah, you know, and and your Lord and the Lord of your far, forefathers. Okay, it's not just you, Pharaoh, but you know they believe they were descendants of gods. All of your line of pharaohs, they're a creation of Allah. They're a creation of this Rabb, Rabbul Alamin that I'm telling you about. So His application of of Allah's instruction to him faqula lahu qawlan layyan did not result in him watering down his message or 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 changing it or altering it or or being passive he was he was respectful you know it's interesting but the, he was confident the idea of respect and you know the common saying the, the the same heat that would soften a carrot would harden an egg right uh it just brings me back to the thought of um the dialogue that takes, or in this case, maybe it's monologue mm. of the Mu'min Ali Fir'aun. Mm. And even the way that he speaks, and this is something from the class. Yes. And how it's like, oh, oh, my people. Like that yeah. genuine. Genuine concern. Yeah. Care. And uh, and I think this is something that comes down to it is like, do you care about yeah. whom you're talking to? Yeah. Darwa is not, Darwa is not, you know, keeping a list and, and checking names off a list and and getting more number of shahadas under your belt. That, that's not da'wah. It's that's uh, not what it is. It's it's having genuine concern for people and, and wanting what's what's good and what's best for them. You know, it's interesting because this principle of sincerely, genuinely caring about people. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing with social media. If you were to sum up social media in one piece, because essentially it's communication. Okay. 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 And in the sense of when you are producing content mm-hmm. you're targeting a people okay a profile yeah but what you're doing is you're trying to give them value okay and i think this is a misconception that a lot of people have i am using an incredible amount of self-restraint not to go on a <laughs> rant against the okay. incredible amount of lack of genuineness on social media okay okay so and, and maybe this is where maybe i can help clarify okay right Bringing him back, one of the definitions of da'wah. Uh, <laughs> so the idea is that you 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 can produce content, and, and I'm mentioning social media because it it is a major form of communication today. It is I'm not denying that. Yeah, it is. And uh, but even in that communication, what a lot of people use it for is like, hey, look, I'm eating at a Chinese restaurant. It's like nobody cares. But at the same time, it's like, well, if I were to produce it, or like if I were to say, hey, look, I'm at a Chinese restaurant. How do you, when you're eating out, how do you uh, make sure that you are not overeating and staying healthy with a particular goal for anybody who cares about this? So basically there's something of value in your content, in in what you're sharing and why you're sharing it. Right, right. Okay. So what's your rant now? Now I'm curious. Here's the thing. Okay. There are individuals that I really respect and love Mm -hmm. and they're so active on social media. Okay. And, and, And I really love and respect them. You know why? Because their activity on social media has not diminished or taken away from yeah. or hindered their human interaction. And that's how it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing, especially in, in people of my generation and the generations okay. after, okay. is that social media has replaced For- that element of, 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 of live face-to-face human interaction right which and, and it's and it's caused problems with that which is is dangerous and okay. to tie it back to our topic here in this video is yeah. um a big element of da'wah is that human interaction no doubt yeah can da'wah be done in social media and on these different mediums yes it can i don't den- i'm not denying that yeah uh, we should utilize different mediums of communication right to, to communicate with people right no there, there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's within certain parameters and and keeping certain principles and etiquettes in mind yeah but nothing can take the place of good quality genuine human interaction okay so in, in my opinion social media done right is social media that is an augmentation of what you're doing offline you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. if you have nothing going on offline then perhaps one needs to reevaluate what they're doing on social media. Yeah. And unfortunately most people are not. Yeah, they're not reevaluating. Yeah. Because it's 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 the norm of, of the day. You know? But then the other question that comes into play is you have an entire generation of people who haven't been given or nor do their parents have the tarbiya or the know how of communi- and giving the tarbiya 
yeah. of being able to connect with people on a human level. I, and I think it's a similar factor of like how it's, people who grew up with the telephone, yeah, right? Because because the older generation is like, you know what? The way you talk to an individual <laughs> is you pick up the telephone Four and you call them. Four and seven years. Yeah. <laughs> we used to. Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to walk to school uphill both ways. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, but the idea is, and, and I think this is even even if you can bring it back even further. Yeah. Right. The idea of the printing press was so like, like yeah, like oh well, they're not going to be able to learn how to write. Yeah. No. No. You. you uh, no. I. I see what you're saying. Right. That there are these. There are these. There, the, there's I, an evolution in how people communicate. Yeah. And and, yeah. I, and I don't disagree with you that there will be a diminishing factor of like just how people who had a strong. Oral and now we're talking about social media, and uh, we I don't know what's coming. What's coming to your mind? We think so. You're thinking what like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. All of the blogs, above. all of the, all right? of the above. Yeah. In in a few years, it's gonna be like people are gonna be talking about Dude, VR. You know, like two years ago, nobody knew what AI. Snapchat was. Yeah, right. Yeah. And we're and and even augmented reality and like three sixty views and all, all of that, yeah. all that stuff. But like virtual but, reality but, is now the next thing. Yeah. Possibly, who knows? Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, I think there still needs to be a lot of but video. And yeah. I think that the implementation of video is going to be a lot more across yeah. the board, whereas yeah. before it was just kind of restricted to YouTube. Yeah. Right. And so, but and, and again, let me let me try to bring it back home. You yeah. know, when when we talk about in the course, Mu'min Ali Firaun, that yeah. believing man from the people of Pharaoh, um, um, that that defended the da'wah of Musa. Yeah. He's talking to his people. He's, ya qawmi. Yeah. And he's appealing to their logic. He's appealing to their their emotions. He's talking about the mercy of Allah. He's talking about dunya versus akhira and mm-hmm. and jannah versus jahannam, paradise and, and hellfire. And in order for him to hit those points, yeah, to hit, he needs to know his people. And you know what's really interesting. And, and this is yeah. another thing that 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 makes me, you know, uncomfortable about people that are so engrossed in social media. Is you know how much do you really know about this person? You need there. There needs to be that element of human. Look, all the messengers, and and we see this in in, in Musa, and, and we see this in the Prophet Muhammad sallam. Yeah. Incredibly good people skills. How to talk to people effectively. Yeah. How to, how to deal with people. How to handle different types of people. Right. Musa deals with a plethora of different personality types. Sure. You know, and and that's a that's a big part of his and, story. And I, think, I think the uniqueness about Musa sallam's position is that he is one. He's one of Bani Israel, yeah, right, and being having also been raised by his real mother, yeah, um, he understands the nuances and the society and the culture of Bani Israel. Yeah, at the same time, he grew up in the house of Fir'aun. Yeah, so he so understands, he understands that culture as well, right? That, yeah, and it's like even in like if you look at Islamic history, the yeah. people who are very effective in communicating, governing, yeah. and giving that what too, um, like for example, North Africa, mm-hmm. those people who are like part uh, Amazigh Berbers mm-hmm. and part Arabs, and they. I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed that you know the word Amazir. Thank you so much. <laughs> like almost no one knows that term. They're like the Berbers. Okay. So, uh, like the fact that somebody who had both cultures, they were yeah. actually excellent. Like Musa bin Dusayr, I, th- I believe he had a dual background. Mm. Um, and even in Spain, when they did the Dawah, the people who had a, a multicultural background were able to communicate even best. And this brings me back to like one thing I'm realizing is that. Um, because I'm from Houston, I'm mm-hmm. well, not from Houston. But I'm living in Houston, yeah. and I'm really close to geographically to Islam and Spanish, yeah. right? And these guys are educating uh, uh, Latinos about Islam. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is, you know, talking with them, and and my general reaction would be, hey, you know what? All of these other like non-Hispanic Muslims mm-hmm. should uh, l- go to Hispanic Muslims, Islam and Spanish, and folks, and learn from them how do you communicate Islam to Latinos because there's not only Latinos in Houston, there's Latinos all over the U.S., mm. right? But, and it's, what's interesting, what I find is that it, it's happening the other way around. Mm. Like, there, people are telling the Latino Muslims, this is how you give da'wah to Latinos, right? And it's like, no, yeah. that's not how you give da'wah to Latinos because there's, you don't even understand the nuances and the of cultural, the language, of, of the, the culture, language, of, of the culture, of their background. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think this That's is, why Allah said that he sent messengers bilisani qawmi. Yeah. With 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 the tongue, with the language of 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 his people, yeah, you know, so that they can understand who they're talking to. Um, that that's a big part of effective doubt, understanding who your audience is, knowing where they come from, and I think this being goes, able to relate to them. And I think this goes back to the social media factor too. Is that if somebody wants to be successful in da'wah, 
and mm. even not even that one, but just marketing mm. and, 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 and PR on social media is that you need to communicate from a point of genuine authenticity and knowledge of nuances to the crowd that you're talking to. Yeah, unfortunately, the the, the problem, uh, you know, it, what's sad to see is that a lot of people are are one type of person on social media, another type of person in real life. Unfortunately, that's I think that's a catastrophe. And then the other thing is, you know, the point that we were alluding to earlier about Musa dealing with different types of personalities and, yeah. and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also dealing with different types of personalities. You know, it's it's problematic when, you know, if 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 me, if I as a person I can only have a good, uh, authentic, good quality interaction with one personality type. Mm. That's problematic. You know, the, we also learn from Musa. One of the things we learn from Musa is how to be flexible, how yeah. to adapt to different situations. He went through different phases of his life and each one was totally different than, than the one before it. Yeah. But he doesn't just break. He adapts. Yeah. How can I? How can I learn how to adapt in different flexibility? Situ- yeah, I mean, if if a person can only function well, can only find fulfillment, can only be happy when all the cards are in a lot. <laughs> in, in one particular yeah, yeah, way, yeah, yeah. like that, it do, that's not how it doesn't work like that. You know, we we are we are we're meant to be able. We learn from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and from Prophet Musa and from the other messengers to deal with different segments of society. So I, I guess I guess the question now is maybe a, a, an appropriate takeaway um, is, and I think I, I see two major takeaways from this, right? Takeaway number one is perhaps if one doesn't get, if, if, if one doesn't move out of their comfort zone much, hmm. if you only, let's say, socialize with one ethnic group of people, hmm. if one is so ethnocentric hmm. or, or whatnot, perhaps one should take time out and try to meet with other types of people. Yeah. You know, expand your comfort zone. Yeah, and, and let me also uh, add to that. Look, people are of different personality types. For sure. Not everyone's going to be a social butterfly. Of course. Not everyone is a super extrovert, you know, just super happy to talk to everyone. Not everyone's like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. Can they still be effective in da'wah? Absolutely. Yes, they can. Yeah. Um, you I mean, know, they have no one's that, perfect. Yeah, they have to, Allah they have, is perfect. Yeah. We say al-kamal lillah. Perfection it belongs to Allah. Okay. Uh, all of us have certain strengths and certain weaknesses. Of course. That's the nature of human beings. So, so the idea is, how can I use my strengths, you know, in in and be effective in my da'wah? Mm. And and what are some of my weaknesses that I can complement, or or maybe you can compliment.